Warning, this podcast episode contains spoilers for the movie Frozen 2. If you're not interested in spoilers, please exit the premises now. This is Leslie. Welcome to Geeky Girls Night In. Hold on to your seat. Uh, what are you doing? Now you're talking! And now... You are now listening to the Geeky Girls Night In. Podcast. Podcast. You are now listening to the Geeky Girls Night In podcast. podcast. start this off do you want to sing you should sing i don't i don't know what to sing okay all right hold up i'm gonna put like before this there's gonna be like the alarm bells the wee wee yeah yeah yeah, and that the spoilers may occur so um hold on okay you ready Mm -hmm. i don't know all the words because i haven't seen frozen one um let it go let it go can't hold it back anymore let it go let it go that's all i know that's something, all you think. something <laughs> something adore i, I don't, don't care but something else. i just want you to be really grateful that you don't actually know every single word to that song it came out in 2014 Mm -hmm. is that correct wait uh i want to say 2014 or 2013 yeah it was one of those and so geeky baby wasn't born till 2015 so by that point by the time that she was interested in tv shows like frozen mania had passed yeah so she still gets glimpses of it at school like she knows who Elsa is and that's how we ended up going to the movie because on the Kindle Fire Stick they had like a big advertisement towards the top and she's like that's Elsa and I was like yeah Elsa has a new movie coming out would you like to go see it and she's like I think I would so <laughs> yeah okay so I just looked it up so it was 2013 so yeah like yeah, it was yeah we skipped all that so what is this this is 2019 yeah six Ge- years later yeah geeky baby started getting into shows like two years ago and she is very she was very structured in what she watched like if you tried to change it to anything else there would be tears like we they don't netflix doesn't have it anymore but they had um little einsteins and little einsteins was only on for two seasons Mm-hmm. and we watched that those two seasons for two and a half years straight oh okay so you're living like or you were living my life at some point because that's oh, where i'm at with sesame street and yeah. there's only like a few seasons like maybe five seasons of sesame street on hulu <laughs> so mm-hmm. we're like now we know the it hasn't even been a year straight that we've been watching it and i know every episode i know oh, yeah. every one Oh, yeah. And it was the same with um, the Little Einsteins. We're gonna take a trip and I think we're gonna take a ship to the uh, sky. You know, <laughs> I find I, like everywhere we went. And then I found out that they have like a remix version of that. Yeah, they do. It's kind of tight. I, I, love, <laughs> I love the remix. I, I love it. It was awful because we were like in the front yard like dancing to it. And <laughs> Jeff was like, "Well, y'all, please come in the house. Can't do it. Twerking the little Einstein." Right, exactly. We're going on a mission. Start <laughs> the countdown, yo. So yeah, um, yeah, like that was similar for me. Not, I mean, the twerking, yes, because I just do that. Um, but in 2013, so I was not like I would hear "Let It Go" and everything like that, and it was 
I was in that stage of like, oh, if it's popular, I'm not gonna do it, you know, sure. right? So I actually watched it. It was on DVD for a while, and I talked a little bit about this in my non-spoiler review. Mm -hmm. um, so that's up on the blog right now. Um, so if you've already seen or if you haven't seen Frozen, don't want to know anything about it, we have a non-spoiler review up. You can read it. Yes. Um, but yeah, I I avoided it, and I was like, let me just watch this movie. Like everybody is talking about this movie. I only know about the song. Like I won't hear anything about the plot. Let me just watch it. So it'd probably been on DVD for several months at that point. And then I actually really liked it. <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny because I know you're going into this without having seen Frozen One, right? Correct. Correct. Right. Now I say that and then I know let it go. And then um Geeky Baby has her own playlist on Spotify. Mm -hmm. so um since we share the car so much um because i take her to school and i drop her off because it's right by my job um she has a choice to make in the mornings she can either listen to her playlist um going to school or she can listen to her playlist coming home and then whichever one she decides is when I get to listen to my playlist. So if she decides to listen to it going to school, I get to listen to mine going home. Or I get silence. Just depends on what I want. Right. And so um, I put Love is an Open Door on her playlist. And like I said, still haven't seen the movie. Love that song. Yes. It's a good song. Like... Do you, do you care about, I mean, you've seen Frozen 2, so I don't, I feel like there's a lot of things that maybe you saw that you had questions about, or like, you didn't realize, maybe? Like, the whole thing with Han, maybe? So, like, I know the premise of Frozen 1, like, I know that, so, let me tell you what I saw on Twitter, Okay. and like, this is how <laughs> I know like somebody said somebody was going off again about ariel from mm -hmm. the little mermaid how she's 16 years old and wants to give up her fins for a dude that can't recognize her face <laughs> and yeah she refuses to like the person was like i refuse to let my future children watch this and somebody else said girl like you got the other one where anna went off and uh what was it um left the safety of her home because nobody wanted to make a snowman so <laughs> like, well do you want to build a snowman like do you like I she's I she's don't. lonely she doesn't have anybody else she's just in this big house by herself and i'm gonna talk about that for a second because <laughs> yes go ahead. i have i have some thoughts on that but like so i know the premise i know that the original mm -hmm. guy that she was with was a bad guy and i know that like she was looking for her sissy and like Hans like shows up somehow. I don't know how, like I said, I've never seen the movie. So I only know bits and pieces. Um, but yeah. And so of course somebody's got to fall in love because as much as we want this to be a lesbian love story, it is Disney. Yes. Yeah, Disney. Like, they're not going to let that happen. No, so, not until um, it's marketable, like really marketable. Like yes. if they can make money off it, they'll change in a second. Though I did see an article today where they said that is her name, honey, honey, something. Oh, 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 hold you on. You know who I'm talking it. about? Yes, yeah, she is honey, honey, Marin. Yeah. Honey, Marin is our, our lesbian concession because Elsa didn't end up with a man she didn't end up with a woman but you got honey Marin telling her yeah you belong here yeah it's a it's a long shot I know I recognize it <laughs> but there were some people that were very thrilled about that and how she stayed with honey Marin and when I tried to point out she wasn't technically staying with honey Marin she was staying with the tribe i got told to shut the fuck up and let people have things and you know what <laughs> i mean let them have it yeah i'm gonna let you guys have things because i understand that completely yeah so, yeah let them have it i mean i maybe it was like her and grace but that was like a different that wouldn't be like we don't i mean grace is wind 
grace really isn't a gen i don't know how that works mm. I, I have some thoughts about grace but we can get to that later okay. <laughs> and then my favorite part of the entire movie was olaf acting out <laughs> the first movie and it's not the fact that he was acting it out it was the soldier's reaction to the story <laughs> it's like oh no Anna, what is like he's in tears and people are looking at him like what is going on no that was great and that's why i was like oh my gosh i hope I, like because i know that you hadn't seen frozen one so i was like oh man i hope when leslie sees this that she actually thinks it's funny like she gets it because that was hilarious like i, I was, love olaf i was howling like olaf is sweet he's driving me a little baddie but <laughs> he's sweet but that whole thing like geeky baby was kind of curled up in my arms because we were at an amc theater where you can lift the armrest Oh yes, and like, those. and like she could kind of like sprawl out between my chair and her chair and like like cuddle up and like i almost choked her like because i had her around my arm and i was like oh my god what is <laughs> look at his face <laughs> so yeah it was great that, that was my favorite part that was really cute i really liked olaf's song too uh the this will all make sense when i am older <laughs> because... spoiler, spoiler olaf it don't <laughs> it don't like i sense i referenced that in the article too i was like i don't i'm not gonna do this like as a spoiler but i just did the song like this you know it's like when you're older what did you say absolutely everything makes sense yeah so in the first movie there's a part where um olaf is singing about summer like oh in summer i want to do what snow does in summer and he basically is like i can't wait to be in summer because it's gonna be great and he's ice so he'll melt right. and so at the end of the song Kristoff is like i'm gonna tell him and anna says don't you dare oh, no. so at the end of that song like everything making sense when you're older like i'm gonna tell him no just oh love nothing makes sense anymore <laughs> nothing makes any sense at no. all like you can't wait till you grow up because nobody can tell you what you can do and you can eat cookies for breakfast and you know what if you want to buy 15 inflatable chairs you can but i'm here to tell you olaf i'm here to tell you that you can't have cookies for breakfast because you are diabetic and that'll jack up your blood sugar yeah you can't you. and and you can't have 15 inflatable chairs because how are you going to get out of them olaf how are you going to get out of them? Your knees ain't what they used to be. Wait. They just Fif ain't. 15? I wanted 15 inflatable chairs because I thought I would have a lot of friends. But there, <laughs> there's a whole problem with that about the fact that I don't like to leave my house and um, I don't like to socialize with people I don't know. Um, 15? Yeah. <laughs> I needed them in all colors of the rainbow. Mine would be hot pink and have like a, a little inflatable crown on top because I'm the motherfucking princess. But yeah, wait, like from Claire's? Yes, or Actually, Aloy, or or that other catalog that did not have my size in it. Um, 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 Delia's, D Delia's, Delia's. Yeah, Whatever. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So. Okay, so actually that doesn't sound too bad <laughs> but your knees i am not megan the stallion i but if if you have 15 chairs like maybe you can just prop one on top of the other so you don't have to sit as low so then you'll be able to get up easier maybe but why spend all that money on 15 chairs when i can just get like a really nice chair and a half because when you're older, everything makes sense. <laughs> and then where are you getting this money at, Olaf? Where are you getting this money at? Because you know what? Between these bills, childcare, therapy, the medication for the diabetes that you have that does not allow you to have cookies for breakfast, shit's expensive. Sugar-free cookies? There's still carbs in them. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Olaf, you really... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> no, it makes sense anymore. No, that was like an ouch. Like you're just sitting in the audience, like like all the kids are like, yeah, and then as an adult, you're like, yeah. So actually, <laughs> exactly. that's yeah. 
poor snowman. I mean, he might be okay. He's probably going to be okay because he's a snowman. He doesn't have, like, mortgage or rent. Or- so, question about Olaf. Mm-hmm. Um, where did his permafrost come from? How did he get that? So, at the end of Frozen 1, um, so Han was like, uh, so Anna was dying uh, and she needed true love to be able to bring her back. And she went to Han and she's like, Oh, I need you to kiss me because you're my true love. And he was like, Oh, well, I wish somebody loved you. And, you know, basically left her high and dry. So after all that happened, then it wasn't um, Hans that did that, was it? No, that was Han. Wait, you're saying H A N? Yeah. Okay. So there's a H A N and an H A N S. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, Wait because, a minute. Because isn't ha- Hans is the dude with the reindeer, yeah? No, 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 no. The dude with the reindeer is Kristoff. Where the hell am I getting Hans from? Star Wars? Maybe. <laughs> so wait, just... so that's Kristoff. Who's the what's the reindeer's name? Reindeer's name is Sven. S V E N. I've been calling this man Han. No. For like two and a half days. Also, Star Wars is not Hans. It's Han Solo. But yeah. so, I mean, so maybe that's where we're, I don't know where we're, because okay. we're it's, tired. It's okay. So uh-huh. Han, Han is the bad guy. So basically, like, Han didn't kiss her. So Anna, like, froze to death, turned into a big ass icicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, Elsa cried and hugged her and then unfreezed her. So then at that point, like, when everything was good, um, Olaf started to melt. He's like, oh, some people are worth melting for. And then he's, you know, getting ready to die, essentially. And then Elsa's like, oh, no, you don't. And then she does her little magic. And now this doesn't make sense why she has the magic to keep him, like, permanently a snowman. But when she did her little magic, all the little, you know, snowflakes went around and he had a little cloud over him. So at the end of Frozen 2, he had, like, a little little snowing cloud. So he just stayed snow. So... Here's my fear. So basically what you're telling me is that we went from the cloud that was constantly snowing on him mm-hmm. to permafrost. Right. And we don't know how we made that jump. So just like how I kind of explained a little bit in my non-spoiler review, Frozen is not a movie that makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like okay. Frozen is not like if you watch Frozen 1, like I really need you to go back and watch it whenever you get time. No rush cuz I mean it's going to be there and it going nowhere. But um there are so many questions from Frozen 1 that did not get answered in Frozen 2. <laughs> and like that's one of them. And so it's like you can enjoy it if you're kind of like it's frozen and the kids love it and we don't really know why the trolls exist and how this happened and how this one troll knows everything and where Kristoff's parents are <laughs> but I mean yeah it's it's not a movie that is made to make sense that's okay the kids and love that's it. fine the kids yeah. the kids do love it like geeky baby kept saying over and over this one part and and laughing like maniacally but she's laughing so hard that i don't understand really what she's laughing at like she's saying it and i wonder if i was high during the movie because i don't even <laughs> remember that part Try, do you uh, she, she kept screaming about how the snowman kept saying he was a bad guy ah, and i'm thinking it's the charades thing and she didn't quite she wasn't quite wording it so that I could understand because that's what it sounds like when he was when when Anna was trying to have them guess a villain oh yeah and he was like <laughs> worst mistake of your life they're talking about Han right 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 but he, she kept screaming I'm a bad guy and just like <laughs> dissolving into laughter <laughs> and I, I'm like okay all, all right that's actually I think I have it I have it I I filmed it so I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play her talking about it. Yeah, hopefully, you guys can hear it. It's it's kind of quiet. So hold on. Let's see. This is it. So you like you like that movie, huh? Yeah. What's your favorite part? Um, the silly part that 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 the guy I'm the bad guy, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, boom, boom. <laughs> Yes, I don't know if you heard that or not. <laughs> I can hear it. It's so cute. 
Like, I have no idea what she's talking about. This boom, boom. I'm a bad guy. I think she's talking about the part. Okay, so this is where they're already in the forest and Olaf is acting it out. Like, not the charades in the beginning. Oh, I think she means, okay. like, when he's acting out Frozen Frozen 1 okay. for the people. Because I remember he did say that. He was like, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> And that that would make no, sense. That would make sense because like I was laughing so hard at the guy's expression about watching this unfold. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. That, that's what it was. Okay. Oh my god, that's so cute. That was funny. It was yeah, I, was the best I, part. I love the kids' reaction to it. Like more than anything, like I could be one of those people to grumble about this is everything that's wrong with frozen and this is all the plots that are i mean we could still talk about that right but i love um you know at the very end when elsa was like running back one of the girls was like elsa (laughs) and it was just really adorable and i wanted to cry because that's so pure (laughs) it was so sweet so let's talk a little bit about the character development here um I'm going to be honest with y'all. Elsa is the only one in this entire film that has a lick of damn sense. I mean, yes. <laughs> the only one. Yes. Um, Like, I'm going to tell you guys a story from baby Leslie's time. Um, Anna pissed me off. And I couldn't quite grasp why. Until I was down in the dungeon and I was getting stuff ready to podcast and it hit me. And that's where the story comes from. So I don't remember what grade I was in. I know what school I was at. So that means that I would have had to have been in either the eighth grade or the ninth grade. I remember this discussion took place um during like right after pre-algebra i got confronted right after pre-algebra so it had to have been ninth grade okay so that's the setup right there you know i'm not great in math i had just gotten out of pre-algebra i was mentally fried and then i got bum rushed by one of my friends now the backstory to that is that um the prior day, a lot of the people that sat at our lunch table were gone. Like, they were all in the same class, and they all went on a trip somewhere. So the only people left were me and this girl named Brooke. Brooke, if you're listening, which I highly doubt, because you probably don't even know how to spell podcast. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So, Brooke and I, we weren't friends. We were acquaintances. We sat at the same lunch table. We knew the same people. Now, like I said, um, the people that we that I normally sit with were gone. Not a big deal. So, like, I sat at our table for a minute, and I looked around, and nobody was there but me and Brooke. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go because I have friends that aren't here that, you know, don't normally sit at our table. I'll just go sit with them. I'll see you later, Brooke. I'm sure you have friends too. And she was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I go and I sit with my friends. A day later, our mutual friend meets me outside of algebra. And she's like, what's your problem with Brooke? And I was like, I don't particularly have a problem with anybody. For me to have a problem with somebody means that I would actually have to care about them. And I uh, don't care about Brooke. I mean, she's just there. You know, I don't dislike her. I don't like her. She's just there. She's like, well, you left her all alone by herself at lunch. And I'm like, I did not do anything. I went to another friend's table and I ate a hash brown with Thousand Island dressing on it because that's what I enjoy for lunch. So why are we having this discussion and why are you bum rushing me after the one class that I hate most in the entire world? Not a good time to do it because I will pop off. And she's like, well, she felt abandoned and she felt alone and she, I'm not, I'm not master of her feelings, chief. I'm sorry. 
that's not me. And Anna equals Brooke. Anna, we've got to be together. We have to be together. We have to stay together. Everything's important. We've got to be together. We've got to be together forever. And, like, I get it. Your sister, your sister was gone. Your sister was gone for a long, long time. And you missed her. But you are living with such paralyzing, crippling fear that you're going to be abandoned by her who wants to leave. She had a whole song about how she does not want to be here and she's only here for you. That you are ignoring the poor pick me Kristoff that you got sitting here that wants to propose but can't because every time he goes to, you're worried about the girl that wants to leave. Yeah, that was my, that was my whole. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's accurate because, I mean, so two things. So, I, A, am just happy that the movie isn't centered around a romantic relationship. True. So I do like that there is, like, the main pull of the movie is Elsa and Anna. Um, I mean, if <laughs> it's kind of like a, <laughs> like a nice little therapy session. Like, obviously, Anna is enamored with her sister that she hadn't had contact with, it, and then her parents died. So she just really didn't have an identity outside of where they lived in Elsa and then instantly attached herself to the first guy that loved her. Right. Which was Han. Or that that said, said he, he loved her. Yeah. Did, wait, And now I got to think about if he actually said, cause there were certain things. If you look back at the song in the movie, there are certain ways that he phrased it. Like he's I, like, Oh, I've never had my own place. Like, stuff like that that's kind of like hinting to him being the bad guy that Mm -hmm. would kind of feed her just enough of what she wants like i'm thinking about the song like love is an open door so i've been waiting to find my own place that's that's no it's crazy i mean we finished each other's sandwiches that's what i was i was gonna say (laughs) i never met someone who thinks who so thinks much. so much like me jinx jinx, jinx, jinx again. again our <laughs> mental synchronization of <laughs> one explanation you and i were just, I just meant to be so yeah no there's no love in there yeah yeah like it's very yeah like the way that he states it is very like obvious and not obvious and so for her like she can fill in she just attaches to people so much because she lost her sister and she lost her parents and she's just like increasingly lonely. Now it is interesting. I mean, I guess it's still the fact that she's so attached to Elsa keeps it, them the central of the story and doesn't move it over to a more romance novel novel with her and Kristoff. Right. So like, I understand the direction that they go in and I think like, I mean, I like Anna's awkwardness. That's kind of what I try to concentrate on. Like, okay. I like that. Like, I like that she's just awkward and falling into stuff. And <laughs> oh my gosh, she's just like not perfect in any way. And no, no. she's clumsy. Like, I love that. Like, I really like that about her. I mean, but it's, I'm trying to think. There's like a therapy term for this, right? Like, attachment something. Yeah. Anyway, they do they have therapy in Arendelle? Arendelle? They should. <laughs> they probably have maternity leave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay, so Anna does not need to have a child because she's got to work through all of these issues first before she has a child. <laughs> well, she's she's a brand new queen now, so like there's gonna be some time before they have any babies. There's there's like she's got queen stuff to do before she can have another. She can pop out a kid. Excuse me. Dang, um, poor Kristoff. There, he's she's gonna ignore him even more now. <laughs> <laughs> right oh and there's another thing i want to say and this may be controversial this may be spicy to some of you spicy 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 take i blame the events of both frozen one and frozen two on their grandfather i mean yeah why and i'm a and i'm gonna pull this all together so okay. <clears throat> we know that the whole war Mm-hmm. between the tribe and the the kingdom of Arndell was because of the king. Mm-hmm. Right? So, you have the king. 
you have like when she's going through her mem like when she's going through the memories and finding out what actually happened Mm -hmm. she sees the king say something that you know magic is evil and all of this stuff so because because of that um I believe, you know, like he's he's very smiley and jokey jokey in public, but he's saying that stuff behind the scenes. So you know some of that stuff is leeching on to his son, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, even though he grows up and he's a just king and and whatever, whatever, his daughter's got this magic power and he's like, Oh no, we can't have this. Um, so they go out to the sea to try to get answers, to try to get it, you know, away from her. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't have been out there if he would have just accepted the magic and be like, oh, people can do things. It's a miracle. It's lovely. People oh, are yeah, different. I agree. La, 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 la. So he caused, he caused a lot of death in his own family. He cursed his own family. Yeah. So, no, I agree. So, yeah. No, that grand- grandpappy was something. I, and I didn't even really think to relate it all in the way that you just did. But yeah, looking back at Frozen 1, they were really quick to be like, oh my God, <laughs> lock her in a room. Like, I don't, right. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. Like, they could have just been like, yes, this is our daughter. And, and so my other thing, and you can, we can go back, but we also still don't know why Elsa has these powers, right? Or am I, did I miss something? You, you kind of missed something. Okay. So, and that's another thing. And we need to talk about her mama too. Mm-hmm. So everybody, like the, the honey, the honey lady, I'm gonna call her the honey lady. Honey lady. Yes. Yes. <laughs> honey lady. She spread out Elsa and Anna's mother's shawl mm-hmm. and showed her the four elements, right? Right. The fifth element, um, as we know, is Elsa. And basically, their take on it was that the four elements gave the fifth element as a gift to the king and queen. That's what I got from it. Mm. See, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. (laughs) And now that I I think about the fifth element, they should have had like the blue operatic person from the fifth element. That's my favorite part of that movie. I know. <laughs> I I I am so confused. Did something pop? <laughs> okay, so so where did I lose you at? Where did I lose you? So okay, so they gave so they gave oh god. So these elements. See, they do say Disney always does so much. And it's great if you're a kid and then when you're an adult and you try to deconstruct it, it's really hard. Yeah. But if they gave them as a gift and then you know the parents freaked out, they're like, Oh, I don't even understand what's going on right now and it seemed like she didn't really have her powers until like what like seven or eight nine something like that again do not know so they were like super shocked and they were like what is this like we don't even know what to do so they had to do like in frozen one like they were doing like all this extensive research to try to figure out why she has these powers and so they went to the trolls first so like why didn't they just if they knew that they she was a gift why didn't they just and why are the trolls even here if the people over there oh god okay so i'm a i'm a i'm back up a little bit like they didn't know like you you're you're thinking about it from the fact that everybody was automatically in on the fact that this fifth element was given to her as a gift they weren't Mm -hmm. this was figured out once she was in the cave because Anna was like did you find the fifth element and she's like bitch I am the fifth element (laughs) and so um (laughs) so that's when like they kind of put two and two together like she was given the mom was given this gift well the mom and dad for saving the life of an enemy that makes sense yeah i mean kind of yeah i i just feel I, you explained it well i feel like i did not gather that from the movie and i think disney should hire you <laughs> i'm available fill, i mean I, fill in these plot holes please <laughs> i am available i am available because i th- what i thought because i mean at that point when she knew she was a fifth element she had already went to oh god what is it even called patapata adapata adapata you know what I'm talking about. The place that starts with an A. They wrote it on the map. 
It's like when you set <laughs> Vikings on fire and that's where they go. Yes. <laughs> out of wall yet? Out of yes. Wild. Yes. It's what? like Idle Wild. Oh, shoot. One of them know. places. Um Hiawatha. <laughs> We're going to call it Kokomo for now. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going Kokomo. No! We'll take it fast and then we'll take it slow. They said Elsa to Kokomo and now she's three months oh, pregnant. <laughs> Way down in Kokomo. So when she went to Kokomo, they did not, like, tell her. So I thought the whole point of her going to Kokomo was to get her powers, get to understand where her powers came from, right? And so it was cool because, like, her mom was there let me think let me think okay um no that was not the point of her going to kokomo the point of her going to kokomo was she was the only one hearing that voice that oh yeah and so she's trying to figure out what the hell the voice wants and Mm -hmm. to clear up the fog to get those people out so she wasn't even at that point like she knew it had something to do with her powers she didn't know what she didn't know what she was gonna find she didn't know how it related to her she thought she might find some more information on her parents possibly but she wasn't expecting the fifth element thing too much Uh, see i need to be in a dis i just what kind of money do i need to pay to just sit in a disney boardroom like while they're planning this out i just want to know we ain't got it (laughs) I won't tell anybody. I just want to know. Like, we can't even afford the photo session at Disney. So I know we can't afford to be in the room where it happens. Uh, we got to be like a fly on the wall or something. Like, the um, um, Christoph song, like, I know that that was like a joke that went too far. <laughs> that ended 1980s up in the movie. <laughs> power ballad, like, all he needed was like a sleigh with like a wizard, like, airbrushed onto it or like a like half naked woman <laughs> and we would have been in the arendelle version of a white snake music video oh, oh my god, my god. Like, oh my god I lost it in the theater geeky baby is looking at me like are you okay like i had tears <laughs> running down my face and i'm like this is the greatest thing i've ever seen in my life and i have seen a lot of shit <laughs> Oh, but when they open it up, though, like right before, and he's like, Sven, why is love so hard? And then Sven starts and, singing. And, and Sven's I'm like, like, I mean, you know. <laughs> Sven he's starts like, singing, and then he brings his reindeer buddies to do the backup. <laughs> and I'm like, I really wish weed was legal in the state of Indiana, <laughs> because watching this high must be amazing. No, I so okay so let's pinky promise we're gonna when it's legalized in your state <laughs> and and hopefully mine um we will rewatch this high <laughs> oh my god and we should we should do like a live thing like we should get really high and then do like, like a live thing on it like the day that it's legalized like we can't get in trouble <laughs> we would have to grab oh gosh we'd have to grab cook from highly inappropriate podcast okay yeah yeah, yeah. because that's oh. all she does is she gets high and she talks about crazy shit oh, so yeah. yeah she would be perfect for this cook if you're listening <laughs> cook please i would love we're, yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna get this sorted out so i would we could do we could do um what did the kids call it the edibles yeah yeah because i don't I, I can't smoke anything i got asthma oh maybe we can get them to make us like little snowflakes oh my god <laughs> little snowflakes for the frozen oh man disney is not gonna like this very no. much but <laughs> no. but they don't I, pay our bills though no, disney they... if you wanted to pay our bills i'd clean it up for you yeah if disney want to pay my bills i will gladly um kick the marijuana to the side yes um <laughs> but i do stop think... talking about the wacky tobacco I... yeah <laughs> Cook, if they end up paying our bills, I'm sorry, we can't do it. Um, Reefer madness, reefer madness. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, but like, yes, that was amazing. I that and that was for us. Like that was definitely for the adults that were watching. And so, like, <laughs> I think a lot of the kids were just like geeky baby. Like they were just sitting there, like, what? I don't really understand. <laughs> and we were living for it like um my husband even was like because he went with me to the screening and he was like dying like (laughs) it was great 
like, who did this? Who did this? Give them a raise because, like, I was in literal tears in the theater. Yeah, I know it started as a joke. Like, I know they were, like, just handing him, like, a script and being like, just just sing this. Just sing it like this. Like, sing it like, just do it. Just try it. And, like, they probably, like, went out to a bar, were talking about it, do it again. And they were like, you know, I'm really going to actually get you in the studio to do this. (laughs) Right? Oh, my God. It was so great, though. That was great. Yeah, my sides are still all stitched up, man. <laughs> oh. What else? Um, I know I'm missing something else. Like, I know, so we talked about, you know, Anna's attachment. Um, you want to talk more about Kristoff? I know you, you've got, we can talk about that because you go first and then I'll kind of, yeah. So I used a phrase at the beginning of this podcast and it's pick me and not pig me pick me (laughs) and for those of you that don't know what that is i suggest you get on facebook and go to the red table talk (laughs) facebook page i do not suggest you do that (laughs) (laughs) at all no if you would if you if you'd like to take care of your mental health don't go to that page um but basically a pick me is a person that how do i put this you can treat them like garbage but it's okay because you're their their person i'm trying to think of an example or like if like you'll see a lot of memes like um if a woman if you come home and the less extreme of that is if you come home from work and the woman or or man I'm just going to do the woman one because that's the one that I see the most. If you come home from work and your woman has your plate ready for you, but it's on a paper plate, you should throw it out because you're a man and you don't eat off of paper plates and she's just not respecting you. I just found, I found the definition on Urban Dictionary. I can read it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> um, it's just like what you said, a person who begs for attention, acceptance and approval of a certain group and different things that they say. In most cases, it's to attain the attention, acceptance, and approval of the opposite sex. Yes. And then the, <laughs> using pick me in a sentence is, you're a pick me ass hoe. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the reason why I brought up uh, Red Table Talk is because, um, I don't know if you guys know, but there is a Facebook show called Red Table Talk. And it's by Jada Smith, you know, Mm -hmm. Will Smith's wife, her daughter, and then her mom. So Jada's mom, Mm -hmm. Willow's grandma. And they talk about these serious topics and they're, they're great. They're good. That's fine. It's just when you get into the Facebook and you have people asking for advice on, on stuff that like will blow your mind. I can't even. He. He's cheated on me like 14 times and he gave me an STD this last time, but he said this is the last time, but now she's pregnant. So should I just beat her up? What? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, (laughs) and it's like worse than that. No, it's, I, 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 I mean, at the beginning I was like, oh, this is like making me feel like, you know, maybe my life isn't so bad. And then it's just like, no, like there are lots of people out here who are like this. Mm, I don't like yeah, it. Yeah. Or, um, <laughs> I'm not putting my, my daughter on birth control so she can be fast. What? Yeah. 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 There's a lot of that. There's, there's it, And sometimes they just throw in some random weird, oh, like I can't even. <laughs> It's, just, it's a lot so yeah. you know if you want to maintain your sanity i would suggest not going to the facebook page however if you have cracked a long time ago much like myself you will enjoy it and laugh heartily yes yeah <laughs> but anyway there's a whole point to this Kristoff is a pick me ass hoe and anna paid no attention to him at all whatsoever this entire movie Unless it was to misunderstand something that he said. 
<laughs> like, like he's trying to propose, and yeah, he's not doing a great job <laughs> at it. You think I'm crazy? Right, right. So I was and like, even the the reindeer was like, bruh, bruh, just let it go, let it go, <laughs> let it go. God, no, okay, no, okay. No. So then, like. And this is what cemented my opinion of Kristoff. So they're in the forest and the guy is like, I don't know women. I don't know relationships, but we have a pretty cool way we like to propose. This dude spent all night getting all of this stuff together. And here comes the tribe leader. He's like, um, first of all, no, I'm not gonna marry you uh, <laughs> second of all your girl done left she left a while ago and he's like she left she didn't tell me oh i'm sure she had a reason it's fine it's fine. if you don't assert yourself and then like what made me even matter was when elsa was trying to save anna and and olaf and she's all angry and upset that she got left behind you just left behind your future baby daddy <laughs> you just left him you didn't say goodbye you didn't hunt for him you didn't ask where you you know i'm pretty sure those reindeer can probably track somebody they've been in the woods 35 years somebody has got to have gotten <laughs> lost before oh my god so no you don't get to be angry at elsa you need to be angry at yourself for being garbage and she's my sister right and Kristoff, <laughs> you need to get into some intensive therapy on why you holding on so hard to this goofy ass bitch <laughs> <'Cause>, okay <laughs> you're so weird <laughs> i'm so irritated this is gonna take me a while to get myself together so two things um the first thing i already forgot but the second thing is um he has a lot so i i mean i disagree but when i say i disagree i'm gonna literally almost say the same thing that you said okay. so i don't really know if he's a pick me as much as he is just like anna where he so in the beginning of frozen one right they're singing that song the yeah that one and uh all these men are like digging for ice now it's unclear uh because uh Christoph is just like a little boy He's got this little ring there next to him, which we assume is, is Sven. Okay. And all these men are like digging up for ice. And he's like kind of like playing and he's not really doing it. The guys aren't paying him attention. So it's not clear if like they're related, if he's just tagging along with this group. And then, you know, they pack their ice and then they go into the woods. Well, Kristoff is at the end and he gets lost. And so that's one big question i have is like did anybody go looking for him did he know these people did they try to find him did he just like hang out with this random group of people so they didn't think to, they were like hey who's this kid whatever we're just gonna you know so he has a lot of the same issues that Anna did. is that i mean obviously he talks to reindeer so <laughs> he's been like alone most of his life not only does he talk to reindeer he talks for, for the reindeer <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of, i mean you know yeah this town really does need some therapy so i don't know if he's pick me as much as he's like trauma i don't want to say traumatized but he like he's all like all pick me's are like that they didn't they didn't get the affection that they needed from a particular person so they're trying to glom on to something else to feel the feelings that they think that they should feel for a person. Yeah, I mean, and I in do. order to do that, they will take whatever they can can get. Yeah, instead of throwing like a thing full of hot fish grease at somebody that dare say they shouldn't be served on a paper plate, <laughs> <laughs> but they do it anyway. Oh, but the other thing I just remembered. So the main thing that I like that he did not do which is the same trope that they do in every movie is like he gets frustrated and then says hey you're gonna choose right now either me or your sister he didn't do that so i like him <laughs> well that's like that's the core of a pick me they're not gonna make you pick because they want like whatever scraps of love they can get so bad that oh yeah it's fine that you you know leave me and follow behind your sister who doesn't even want you there that doesn't even want to freaking be here and you can't see that but i can see that but that's okay because you're just gonna love me a little bit and that's all i really need 
Also, side note, I don't know if y'all caught this, but I think Anna's into BDSM. Oh, I caught that because I have a dirty <laughs> mind. <laughs> I like oh, you in leather. Yes. Me and my husband looked at each other and we were surrounded by children because this was a press screening and public screening if you could get the tickets. So there were kids in there and we were dying at yeah. that part. Oh my God. I Stoff has a gimp suit. <sighs> oh my God. I like you better in leather. No, have you seen? Have you seen? Like there's like people who um take like uh, the Disney coloring books, and then they redraw them as like different things. Huh. And so there's one that somebody did with Tangled, where he ha- she has Flynn Rider, um, like tied up in the chair with her hair. Oh, dear. And so they cha- yeah, they changed it. <laughs> oh, dear. and it's like her tying him up with like chains. <laughs> it's it with rope. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, no, I. I'm glad you caught that because I was going to feel insanely guilty if I was the only person who thought that when that line came up. Be like, okay, leather daddy, what y'all doing? I mean, there's there's also somebody drew like Disney kinks or something like that. I can't even remember who did it, but it was like... There was somebody that drew like the Disney princes like naked and hairy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was good. Like Gaston oh, was, good. was fire. Yeah. Oh man, I bet he was though. <laughs> Gaston's such a jerk, but no he's actually really... like Gaston, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I would not go back to Disneyland. Like if I saw that and then I went to Disney, I would be like, oh, because the Gaston character is really good. Like he's there at Disney. Yeah, like he interacts with everybody. I'm like, actually, you know, I hated Gaston in the movie, but I actually like you a lot. <laughs> and so if I saw that and then I went to Disney, uh, uh-uh, I just over. I just saw an article on why like Gaston was the better choice, other than um, the Beast. Like because the way that they put it, it was towards the time the way that it was set up, it was towards the time. Um, around like when French monarchy was getting beheaded by uh, the citizens because there was no food and they were living so frivolously. So if Belle would have chosen the prince for real, like she'd have been beheaded a few years later. If she'd have chosen Gaston, he, excuse me, he would have probably been part of the revolution, all this other stuff and how he actually had friends and like people like that. And then that, the beast would have been killed by one of those three floozies that were always like all over Gaston with a with a bayonet. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> what? It was a very logical, thought out argument with timelines and everything. I was impressed. I yeah. If I can find that, I'll post that to uh, the Instagram because it it made sense. It made sense. I would just not deal with any of them and maybe kill the beast and like live in the library. My personal preference. <laughs> you know what doesn't make sense? <laughs> Since we're talking about things that actually make sense or a little sexy. But um what was um 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 the lizard? Why the lizard? He was fire. He was a fire lizard. Well yeah, he was just which like I think what was he saying? Like I came home and I said something and like my husband wouldn't talk to me for 15 minutes no um (laughs) i was like the lizard was a representative of hemorrhoids what (laughs) because he was on fire and like he didn't want to be on fire because as soon as he like got cooled in elsa's hands he was like ah yes so he didn't want to be on fire it was a hemorrhoid he was a hemorrhoid that's that's my logic that's that's worse than the bdsm Camp that we just came up with like disney also does not want their characters to be like associated with him words either like i don't think they appreciate that this is why it, we <laughs> to take it one step further if he was a hemorrhoid that meant elsa was a tux medicated pad okay this is why we rank low on facebook <laughs> or preparation h depending this is why, on your preference this is why nobody can see our post because disney's like uh <laughs> No way. Disney, you got to let our mind breathe. I will shut the hell up, though, for a couple of free tickets to a Disney park and 
like mm-hmm. a photo pass because right. I need all the pictures. Oh yeah, but, I need one. Hey, what was okay? So this is the other thing I do want to talk about though, and what uh, like what do you think? Like <sighs> we're both black, right? See. Si. So from your perspective, do you feel like the diversity push in Frozen 2, do you feel like it was done well or do you feel like it was sloppy? Um, Like there were certain things like I noticed they added a black character and then also like how they had the tribe in there and then they did the tie with like the tribe and the song. Actually, this is our song, you know, the one that you love from the opening of Frozen. Um how do you like did it did you notice anything did it affect you did you like it did you not like it like what are your thoughts on that okay so i think this question would be probably better answered by someone who has seen frozen one so i'm assuming during frozen one it was all lily ass white people am i correct yes you're correct okay so there's I actually think- a f- full argument about it like sorry not to you're interrupt fine. you but there's you're like fine. a full argument about when frozen one came out you know, because they're like, wow, this is like the whitest thing ever. And the other people are like, no, because where they're from and it's northern, like it's a very, you know, they're going to be fair skinned because of that. And so, I mean, and this was a Tumblr thing, like people were going back and forth arguing oh. about it. Okay. And I mean. But like, here's the thing, yeah, like there's, there's indigenous tribes everywhere. Yes. So, yeah, there should have been, there's. <laughs> In every freaking Disney movie, there should be some brown people. There's yes. indigenous tribes everywhere. Yeah. So um, I think this was good. Um, I know that there was a particular tribe brought in on this. I, yes. I, I don't know all the details. I didn't pay attention because I didn't realize what happened last time like I, I didn't know any of that I didn't like I said I haven't seen the first one so um I thought it was good um but I didn't like the fact that instant conflict between you know the brown people and the white people just like instantaneous um white people plus one brown person yeah plus the one brown person but the mm-hmm. one brown person i did appreciate that he didn't like he wasn't fighting off anybody he, he was just trying to protect the prince yeah that's that was his job that's what he did he he, he did his job sort of well like i forget what happened but like the prince got knocked <laughs> out so no he did i do like that the one black person didn't turn bad like when they were on the bridge and Anna was like, no, I got to get through. Like I thought like he was going to be like, no, I'm going to do what I want to do. Instead he ended up helping. So that, I mean, that was a step in the right direction because they could have easily just been like, made him be like, no. (laughs) Right. Right. And then even, even in the beginning when the, the fog cleared and you saw the soldiers and then you saw the native people, um like you could tell that there was animosity between them Mm -hmm. but it wasn't severe animosity like they're not going to pick up and just start fighting you can tell that for the 30 some years that they've been in there they had somewhat worked together Mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't like a big deal to have to work together yeah like they like it seems like they kind of like the the initial conflict was buried like right beneath the surface Mm -hmm. but like they kind of treaded over it to 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 work out and do what needed to be done to help each other live within that fog Mm -hmm. yeah i agree i mean i liked so i and i can't think of a good example on the top of my head but there's a lot of times well i guess i could say like any 90s tv show I mean, Magic School Bus is amazing, but that's an example of like, we'll just throw in one of each. (laughs) Right, right. And, you know, 90s were really big on that or throwing in the token, basically, right? And they don't really have much of a backstory. They don't really contribute to the story itself. But hey, we, we have a brown person. So, you know, we're doing the diversity thing. Here, I did get a sense that they did actually seem to structure it pretty well and disney has the resources and the money to be able to research and do these things so i would be really disappointed if they didn't 
um like i think there's an article where they met with the indigenous people yeah that's what i'm saying they brought them in to consult yeah and so it really did seem like they did it well and the animation in it too um like i'm looking at the characters right now and it doesn't they didn't i don't know how you feel but they didn't seem like a whitewashed version of elsa you know what i mean (laughs) like it didn't they seem to really have realistic features that makes sense yeah yeah like you kind of tell like you know like a barbie like they're gonna use the same mold on every barbie and just paint them black (laughs) i just realized something so um the the tribe's name in frozen 2 is north aldra and elsa and anna's mama Mm -hmm. is from that tribe the oldest tribe why the hell is she like lily white so that's what i was also confused about i Um, just realized that yeah no i don't don't know maybe her daddy i don't know well we don't really know about her parents no so we don't know we also 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 okay so grace the wind that they called grace i thought grace was the mom like i thought the wind was the mom because the wind and all that you know the lights and all that shit was Mm -hmm. the one that was getting her to kokomo um (laughs) and then when she went to kokomo bam it's her mom on the screen you know on the ice so i was under the impression that the wind was the mom and they just were confused and they're like we'll just call you grace she was like no dummies i'm your mom am i like is that like far-fetched <laughs> it's not far-fetched and it, it could be but it was gail not grace Gail. Yeah. <laughs> i will never forget that because like gale of wind is you know, this sort of thing eh. so but yeah oh and listen to this so this is an article from inside the mm-hmm. and you were you were talking about the in the first frozen um it opened with like a coral choral chant yes so listen the first frozen film opened with a choral chant that likely wasn't recognizable to many audiences before seeing the film mm-hmm. but to the indigenous sami culture in scandinavia the chant meant so much more the song also used throughout frozen 2 was written by south sami musician and composer frode fjellhem and i apologize if i mispronounce the name who draws on the ancient Nordic indigenous vocal tradition Joik that was later outlawed when these communities were Christianized. Hmm. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, that's cool that it had deeper meaning and then they tied it back in Frozen 2. That was really awesome, actually. Because I know so many kids were also singing that song. Like, whenever they got tired or let it go, they just sang that. <laughs> I, I really need to see Frozen 1 to kind of get you this do. together. So Yeah. We could also, like, you could watch Frozen 1. Like, I have it because I, <laughs> I have Disney+. Plus. Um, well, you shall. You know, I'm a sucker and I, I really like Disney. Um, so, I mean, when you get around to watching it, I could watch it again, too. And we could kind of, we could do a Frozen 1 podcast. So then you could, like, tie it all back together. Yes. That would be cool. Yes. Yeah. So. We're doing it backwards because that's what you do when you're older. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Not at all. Not they at all. lie to you, Olaf. They lie to you, baby. Run away. Know, okay. Speaking of, before, before we get off here, I just need to talk about my boy, Olaf. Oh R.I.P. God. Original Olaf. Um, that broke my cold, dead black heart. Oh, God. He's like, I, oh, fine. he's like, warm hugs. And I was just like, like I burst in tears. And <laughs> Nikki Baby was like, are you all right? No, no, I will never be okay again. <laughs> and so she started looking for tissues in the the crook of the 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 sea like here you go it's fine i'm like no i'm not Aww. going we need buttons no i cried and and i wrote that in the review like i cried during this but maybe it's just me because i cry during everything oh, i cry I during to- abominable <laughs> i cry <laughs> like, all the time now yeah i just i so i cried yeah when she was like do the next right thing and i thought actually 
<laughs> this is really dark. But when she like came off the cliff, like she came when she was gonna like jump to the other side, right? Mm-hmm. I thought she was jumping off the cliff. Oh my god. <laughs> so I was like, oh god. <laughs> Like, I really, I thought that was what was coming. So I was kind of like, oh, wow, I really need to, wow. (laughs) But um, I cried during that. I cried. There was something else I cried at. I don't know. Definitely Olaf. I was crying. Um, And I think, like, the animation and the way they did it with, like, it being such a slow burn death for Olaf. Like, the snowflakes just, like, flaking off. Yeah. And then you look and then he's just like a pile and these little snowflakes. And I'm like, I know he's coming back because, I mean, franchise, like you got to. But damn, this hurts. <laughs> there, was, there was something I didn't understand in that pile. He mm-hmm. was a pile of snow and then he had little flowers around him. What were those little flowers? What were those flowers? Okay, hold on. My brain is kicking my butt. What was the flowers? Were they, they, were the like, purple- they were little purple flowers. Yeah, they were purple flowers. I remember some about purple flowers, but I don't. I don't know. I actually don't know right now. Man, if you can figure out what those flowers are, like, you guys need to tweet us because I'm stumped. I remember, I know what you're talking about. They were there. I just can't remember the significance of it because I was probably too busy crying, thinking that Anna was going to hurl herself off Oh, the my God. God. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. She's going to jump. <laughs> do the next right thing what the frick um i mean i did like the way that she went about it like she's like oh yeah we got to destroy this dam and everything else because you know granddad grandpappy kind of messed up where were the trolls why couldn't the troll why doesn't anybody like the trolls because nobody knows why the trolls (laughs) nobody knows why like just little rocks that roll in yeah, like somebody was very, very angry and they're like, the trolls didn't have any screen time except for a little bit. Thank God. I'm like, they're little people that tell the future. What's wrong? It's, well, I mean, for me personally, it's like, I just, I don't understand <laughs> like the purpose, but that's because I'm thinking of it too much. Like they sang a song and it was really cute and Frozen One and I should just really accept that, but I just, I don't understand (laughs) like how do they have this much knowledge about elsa and her powers and what she needs to do and why is um the main one why is he so cryptic like why doesn't he just tell you like this is what you need to do like step by step like he's very like oh you know you got to find true love and then you'll you won't die (laughs) and and she was like oh i'm gonna go to han and she he could have stepped up and been like no 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 no, that's not what i mean see what i mean is this (laughs) like ugh, i don't know the trolls sing a really nice song though and the frozen one so okay. well, when you see frozen one you might actually be able to make sense out of the trolls i cannot but i am a writer who thinks a lot about plot devices and linear plots and how things are supposed to work and <laughs> those trolls kind of <laughs> say fuck that <laughs> oh my god (laughs) we're here and we don't have a purpose we're just here like yeah but yeah i mean it would have been really weird if they did another trolls song and i think also with the other trolls um what is it dreamworks do you you know what i'm talking about because baby likes it right so dreamworks has their trolls so i think because dreamworks has their trolls i bet there's something that like frozen trolls can't necessarily do a lot right now to like conflict with them Mm -hmm. i feel like there's like some kind of contractual obligation that they can't (laughs) be as like apparent in the movie because it's gonna mess with you know somebody else's trolls i don't know i i I sit in a lot of executive meetings and i know how they talk so (laughs) (laughs) like my god guys let me just write down this note here but i mean yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to do a second podcast like do you know like do you have like red box or anything by you yeah yeah there's one over by the cvs is there is is it on red box do you know i don't i don't know i I think it should be because the frozen usually that's what they'll do if the second movie is out then they'll kind of like push the first movie to get people to rewatch it i also might do the like 
I might get Disney Plus. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, uh, you got to get Disney Plus. I'm I've, telling you, it'll change I've your life. I got options. We'll see. Here's the problem with that. I don't watch a whole lot of TV. I'd rather read a book. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, when I do watch TV, I get so pumped um, that, you know, I have the TV to myself and I'm going to watch some TV. And I still end up watching the same 50 episodes of diners drive-ins and dives <laughs> so i mean that's just who i am i mean if you're nostalgic at all like i've rewatched tailspin darkwing duck i've rewatched um do they have gummy bears is gummy yes bears in there? yes gummy that's on my list bears dancing everywhere high adventures that are beyond compare why can i know that song but i don't know the okay we are the gummy bears <laughs> yes they have so i'm just saying like um like there's a but like i haven't watched smart guy yet um that's on my list um me and baby eight have watched uh monsters inc and monsters university he seems to really like that that's cool. um it it has given me an immense break from something other than Sesame Street. So I'm really happy for that. That's cool. Um, they have, I think they're having like the new Lizzie McGuire, like with them being older now. Yeah. They and, just got Gordo signed on. Oh my God. Gordo. Okay. So I just real quick segue. I Gordo was probably like one of my first crushes. And that explains a lot about me as a human being. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm a little, I'm a little too old to be in the Lizzie McGuire gang. But, like, Gordo always looked high as hell to me. Oh, like, he's he always favorite. looked drugged out. Yeah, so. that's, that says a lot about me. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. It's he funny. had, like, long, scraggly hair, and he, he was did. kind of a nerd. Like, I mean, not long, but, like, he was, like, you know, short, like, chin length yeah. hair. And he was, like, kind of a nerd. Like, he wasn't, like, a big, buff athlete or anything, and he was kind of weird. And I like weird people. So, like, when I was, like, what, 11, 12, I was, like, I'm going to marry <laughs> Did me some Gordo. And now Gordo's fine. Mm. Is he? Hold on. I mean, to me. Because, uh, <laughs> like, I saw a picture the other day. I'm just, like, he's eh. Um, did he end up with Miranda or Lizzie? Um, I feel like he did. Oh, I'm looking at a picture of Gordo. Yeah. Yeah. And now I see why you think he's on drugs. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought he, he looked like he was on drugs back in the day. Don't get me sued. He, he, he just, he looked high all the time. No, I could see without context and without ever watching the show, like why, why you would think that like <laughs> now that I'm looking at like old pictures of him on Google, um, he was still my fave. Like, I'm like, oh, let me just get your hair out of your eyes like you're so cool and you're so nerdy and like now i mm, i'm gonna marry that man i'm already married but i (laughs) i mean i would marry gordo i would (laughs) um, but disney plus is everything i i would not steer you wrong on this it's if i mean if you could spring the seven dollars a month with the way the world is going there's a lot of crap going on i there's so much crap and like i disney plus is just a bowl of happiness you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) even if you just have him playing in the background because i there's a couple things like i mean i watched the beginning of telespin and then the second season i just had it going in the background and honestly i felt like good like i'm one of of those people that can't focus while like tv's on the background um when i met my husband one of the big problems that we had um when like i would spend the night or whatever is that he needs some sort of noise to go to sleep i need dead silence mm. so like how does our, that work for you now our, our compromise is a fan okay okay yeah yeah like i can sleep through a fan okay but like he used to have the tv on and i would be like i he would get up at like seven o'clock refresh and i'd have bloodshot eyes like this is not gonna work <laughs> i can't i can't sleep with and i say that but there's like three movies that i can sleep through but it's very weird like i always wake up like (laughs) there are three movies they have to be on vhs and 
like I can tell when the movie stops. Like I wake up when the movie stops. I want to know which one it is. Oh God, what was it? Um, Mystery Men is oh, one. That's a good one. Oh, it has Kel Mitchell in it. Oh, mm-hmm. Half Baked, mm-hmm. and what was the other one? I want to say Center Stage. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think. So yeah, uh Mystery Men, Half Baked, and Center Stage. They mm-hmm. gotta be on VHS. <laughs> like I can't do a DVD because like like it'll it'll wake me. It, but like if you put a VHS tape in, like and you let it go all the way to the end, most VHS players will like stop it, rewind it, spit it out, and then your TV will turn off. <laughs> so that I can I like, do. I like that. I also like the of like when the vhs play like you can hear the tape yeah going yeah, yeah. through i really like that sound i used to actually <laughs> this is gonna be really weird or way off topic but i used to like if i was very anxious like even as a child like if there was like conflict or somebody was fighting or something really bad happened i could calm down by watching the shopping channel qvc Oh, that's nice. And it's because the way that they talk, their tone is so even. And so, like, unlike the news, so I would, like, start off by watching the news because news also has a very even tone. But they're, like, and at 7 o'clock down the street from your house, somebody got shot and killed and three kids got kidnapped. So it's, like, the nature of what they're saying is still, like, heightening my anxiety. But I would literally watch QVC for hours and my mom would be mad because she thought I would, like, try to call in and buy something i'm like no i just really like this channel but like <laughs> they're talking oh, about God. bracelets and <laughs> yeah just look, look at these diamonds they're so great yeah. they look like real diamonds but they're diamantes yeah and i would like yeah. actually turn it up kind of loud and i would be able to fall asleep to that and that i now i can't do that i'm like uh people are talking i need <laughs> Well, and not only that, it's not calm anymore. They're, like, frenetic trying to get your yeah. money. Yeah, they're, like, th- so they do go that up and down, like, even tone, and then they get really excited, and then they start yelling, and you're like, oh, what is this? Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, and Love Line. I could fall asleep to that, but I should not have been watching Love Line when that was out. Do you Probably remember that? Probably not. Now? Isn't that with Dr. Drew? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm like, what's up? What's up? bj what is you're right, right. <laughs> like i knew I, i'm like you know what this is not for me i'm gonna go ahead and turn this off yeah. but, it, it, the- but his voice was like just also that even voice like he would be talking about something pretty inappropriate to like educate the person obviously and then right. i would just be like oh wow i really like this voice i'm gonna fall asleep to this i'm nine i should not know any of this information <laughs> now i'm watching frozen 2 and <laughs> laughing about leather <laughs> right a lot. here we go oh well <laughs> so do we have anything else on the docket for tonight um no you're gonna we're gonna follow up and do a frozen one so that'll kind of we can continue some conversation on like tying those two in together see if anything like makes sense i really want to know after you watch frozen one like if that makes sense to you like you tell me that whole plot and you've seen frozen two this makes sense <laughs> Like nothing, nothing makes sense anymore. Nothing makes sense, Olaf. Well, like if you think about it, none of the Disney movies make sense. Like the Lion King, like lions live in prides where mm-hmm. there's one male lion and a bunch of females. Mm-hmm. Scar shouldn't have been anywhere near that. Mm-hmm. Scar should have been on another tundra, somewhere in the tundra, on, on another plane like further down because if there's another male around there's going to be like major fights all the time so mm-hmm. I, nothing makes sense but that's why he was in the uh elephant graveyard right but he was still close enough that what you call mufasa was like you weren't at my son's christening where the fuck were you and like why would he be there he's not supposed to be there but all the animals had to go. That's not how lions <laughs> work. And that's another thing. Like, he, those would have been snacks for Simba. All the people bowing, target practice. <laughs> it's a christening. I don't care. That's what, the, I mean, you know, animals do, do animals do christening? 
Is that what they do? I don't know. Does that maybe, happen on Animal Planet? Maybe it was a bris. Maybe it was a bris. It was a Every, Jewish bris. I don't oh know. God. Oh, I don't God. Know. <laughs> Where did they get the equipment for that? Zazu. Oh. Zazu got everything. Zazu got jokes, too, by the way. <laughs> Zazu got real sarcastic and funny in um, live action Lion King. Did you see that one? I have not seen live action Lion King. It goes, that's against my religion. I mean, that's fair. Did I write a review on that? I don't remember. I don't think you did. <laughs> um, but I can tell you, it's. I mean, it, you've already seen the movie. It's the same movie. It's the same oh. movie. There, there are slight differences. But Zazu was, you know, he was sassy in this one. I liked it. And um, Seth Rogen, that's what the blog post I should have written, was that Seth Rogen was born to play Pumbaa. Oh like, God. Pumbaa is my literal favorite character. I'm like, who is going to voice this character? Because nobody else can do it. Seth Rogen was just like, OG Pumbaa. I'm serious. Like, but it's Seth Rogen. Like, you know it's Seth Rogen because it's laugh. By the way, I'm in love with Seth Rogen. I think he is just adorable. And that also explains my taste. In is art. Seth Rogen related to Joe Rogan? Uh, I don't think so. Is he? Google. I mean, they both are high all the time. Seth Rogen. I can't spell Seth Rogen. It's late. Related to Jonah Hill. No. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Let's find out. Um... Okay, I'm looking at this Reddit. <laughs> oh, no. And it says, are Joe Rogan and Seth Rogan related? I don't want Reddit to give me notifications. Are your parents related? <laughs> what? Only through their dealer, I bet. <laughs> yes, cousins. They talked about it many times. Okay. Um, I don't actually know if that's true. I mean, because this is just Reddit. Right, right. right. <laughs> I'll take it, though. Yeah, I'll take it. So they're probably related. I feel like that's like something that like people say to black people though. Like if they saw me and you in public, they'd be like, oh, are you guys related? And we'd look nothing alike. <laughs> you know what? My manila paper baby upstairs was like, we're sitting in the car waiting for my husband to come out of the drugstore. And this lady walks past and she's like, mama, she looks like you. And I'm like... <laughs> Evelyn, that woman looks nothing like me. Her <laughs> hair is black. My hair is brown, Evelyn. <laughs> oh, man. These babies, they will just... <laughs> and she just got quiet and then changed the subject. I'm like, I don't like you. I'm like, it's oh. either because she's brown or she's fat. Which one is... <laughs> I don't know. My son goes up to a random black woman and says, Mama! Mama! Oh, she, and no. She <laughs> no. Was, there there was like one white child last year at, at her dance like during her time like so like the time that she went there was only like one white child and then so dance started back up this year and like this little girl comes down the stairs and it's not the same girl and she's like it's savannah i'm like that mm -hmm. that's not that's not savannah sweetie that's i don't know who that is but that's not her <laughs> so and she just kind of looked at her she's like she looks like savannah she's she's yellow like savannah i'm like savannah because <laughs> because white people are not white to her white people are yellow yeah so okay funny story but <laughs> and then we gotta my, go <laughs> my my sister used to say, would draw everybody in the family like she was younger than me and would draw everybody in the family as brown and one yellow person and they're because everybody is darker it's much darker than me and <laughs> draw me and they'd be like oh who's this oh oh that's my sister <laughs> that's oh quinzel <laughs> she's kind of yellow <laughs> yeah like, like i'm what so yeah that was funny oh my god all right so this was our frozen two review <laughs> if you liked it let us know if you didn't like it i don't really care but you can go ahead and let us know that too yeah, i mean you can let us know but we're not gonna listen to you we're right. just gonna keep recording more episodes <laughs> yeah just more random stuff um this when, remember when it's legal when weed is legal we'll, yes we'll, yes we'll, yep we'll do that um this is gonna get me drug tested at work oh my god <laughs> no, you can drug test me though i ain't mad at it so i don't do nothing wrong um 
this Chris, this Christmas holiday season, December, whatever you call it, I want to get a couple of groups of people together and we're going to talk about, you know, the, the nerdy geeky things that we're hoping for in the new year. Um, things that are going to save our sanity. Um, maybe even talk a little bit about vision boarding. We will see. Um, I have yet to talk to these people. I will have to get off my duff and do that. Maybe I will do it tomorrow. I'm not doing it tonight because I need to go play the Sims Discovering University and get my Sim graduated from college so that she can move out of her family's home so that she can be the teacher that she has always dreamed of. My God, these Sims are more accomplished than I am. (laughs) Right? She keeps missing class because she keeps getting there late, but we're trying. Like all her term papers and stuff are turned in. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. (laughs) <laughs> so funny yes so you can find us on facebook at uh, geeky girls night in or geeky girls guide to life if you're interested in the blog you can go to geekygirlguide.com for articles from quinzel occasionally me when i have time or energy or strength or like even just a frisson of anything in my head um <laughs> Instagram is Geeky Girl Guide. Twitter is Geeky Girls and I or Geeky Girl Guide. Um, yeah. And then we have a P.O. box. I'll put that in the show notes. Feel free to send us notes. Disney, feel free to send me a churro. I don't, I don't know. Um, oh my God. The, what is it? The Dole Whip? The Dole Whip is everything. I want a Dole Whip right now. That's so it's so, so good. good. Um, how do we get to Florida? <laughs> because you know what would be really cool okay this is like my dream for me and you is somehow get a trip sponsor to go to disney world disney world and like walk around and like record ourselves like getting really excited over random things (laughs) like i would just start crying for no reason because i've wanted to go to disney since i was a little kid never been um i mentioned to husbando that uh we need to start possibly planning a trip soon because you know geeky baby's old enough now and he just looked at me with absolute disgust and it's like i hate disney and i'm like i hate you and so (laughs) we'll see how that goes we could do like a geeky girl's guide to disney world and like i could bring my kiddo you could bring yours i've been once Uh, i went a few years ago for the very first time with my husband that's before we had kids and um and it ended up working out we were like going with the charity and yeah it's it's amazing but i'm glad that i went and now i have an idea of like how to navigate it like with the child and everything so like we should totally go and cry over tiana together because i definitely cried over tiana i went to universal studios and couldn't ride anything because i was pregnant <laughs> <laughs> pregnancy ruins everything (laughs) i was pregnant and i was diabetic so i couldn't like have the donut and like the simpsons place and i couldn't have a duff beer and i couldn't uh, you couldn't have a cotton candy or no i did have i i had a butter beer let me scratch that i had a sip of a butter beer Mm -hmm. but that was so sweet that i was like this is gonna kill me here somebody Mm. take this um I'm glad you know your limits because <laughs> I definitely know some diabetic people that are like, hey, I'm going to eat all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, like you're an adult, you know. And they're like, uh, hey, not doing so well. Take me to the hospital, please. I'm like, oh my God, what, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Mama knows her limits. Yeah. Mama ain't trying to go to the hospital. I hate the hospital. So yeah so maybe disney will listen to this and they will let us just just let us go to disney and like we will we'll podcast live and we'll like talk about how great it is and like i have an idea of like where to go we talked about leather daddies on this i don't oh I don't, they, I, they're not gonna like it. <laughs> that should be the title of this Kristoff is a leather daddy Kristoff is a leather daddy yes <laughs> spell okay. it d-a-d-e yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Night. Hey there. Thank you for tuning in. Geeky Girls Night In is brought to you by me, Leslie. Special thanks to Quinzel. Shouts out to Kim, Emily, and Mecca, who are always willing to give a helping hand. Do you like the show? 
Wishing there was something you could do to support? Help us out by buying us a cup of coffee. Go to coffee.com slash geekygirlsni to pledge a cup or two for the show. That's ko-fi.com slash geekygirls, N as in Nancy, I. Your support helps keep the lights on in the dungeon and the podcast on the air. Special thanks to Michelle. She's our first donor. You can check out other writings or interesting tidbits on Geeky Life at geekygirlguide.com. Until next time.